So it's a lovely weekend day and today we're going to be heading over to my neighbor's yard because if you remember a few months ago we went and we installed a potentially really gorgeous looking Florida native plant landscape except here's the thing it doesn't look good it doesn't look good at all so what I'm going to be doing today is we're going to be doing some troubleshooting and I'm going to take you guys through it because this happens to a lot of us we buy plants we have a great idea we put it in and then a couple months goes by and it's not doing what we thought it was going to do so I'll talk you through how I go through troubleshooting and then we're going to go and try to fix this to get it back on track okay so come join me so we're back in my neighbor's yard, Kim and Shane's, where we installed some gorgeous plants. We put in some mooly grass, we put in some Bahama cassias, and we were really, really excited to see this transform. But overall, the space is looking not great. So for those who haven't followed along with the journey, this is about three months old. So we have the five mooly grasses, one Bahama cassia there, and I will tell you, I cannot find the Bahama cassia that is in here. So, and it looks like it's just completely kaput. And here's the thing, I would expect this to be looking different from what it's looking now. So the first thing when I install a native plant landscape or vegetable garden or any type of plant, the first thing I'm always looking for is, did it put on new leaves within the first week or two? And so you can see like this, this is what I'm talking about. Right here, you see, we got fresh green growth. You can see it's new, it's smaller, it's brighter green. When you first put in a plant, that tells you just the initial, like you did not, you didn't kill the plant. So that's the first thing I look for in the first week or two. I'm not looking for it to double in size, triple in size, put on flowers, put on fruit. I'm just looking for, do you feel okay enough as a plant that you can put on some new fresh green growth? Now, as native plants go, a lot of native plants early on spend a lot of time on root establishment. And the reason is, it's because Florida has a really, really challenging climate. So what they're trying to do is put in deep set roots in case there are fires, in case there is monsoon rain, or in case they're going through the drought season, because we have all of those things happening pretty constantly in our native ecosystems. So when it comes to native plants, what I find is in the first month, they just kind of hang out. And a lot more is happening below ground than in ground. So initially when I looked at this project in the first month, I saw green leaves. I didn't see any sad stress signs. I saw new growth getting put on and they just kind of were staying the same size. So that told me it's putting on roots. So that's okay. But now here we are three months later and it's looking like this. This is not good. This is not what we want. So let's start with how we would go troubleshooting. Now when troubleshooting, one of the first things I like to look at is, is like, did I just put in the wrong spot and it's not getting enough sun? So all these plants that we picked out were full sun plants. They could take a full eight hours of just full on Florida sun and they'll be totally fine. Now this location does get a lot of sun, but does go through part of the day with this oak. So you can see the oak behind me is blocking the sun right now, which is why I'm filming now. So <laughs> they may not be getting as much sun. So what do we look for? So we look for the fact that, you know, sometimes the plant's not growing very quickly, but we have plants behind these ones that do get sun and they seem okay. And we know that the sun isn't equal across the space. And now you may be asking, but how would you know that? Really when it comes to your own garden space, it's observation. And since I live like right there, I've watched this garden bed a lot. And what I do know is this end gets more sun than the middle section. And then the far end gets more sun. So you can see that area where there's lantanas, it gets a lot more sun. So if it was a sun issue, because I have the same plant, mooly grass all throughout here, the worst looking one should be the one in the middle and the best looking ones should be on the far side. And the same thing as the cassia then should be the best looking and the cassia that was over there should have been the best looking. Well, that disappeared. That looks like crud. And I would say the mooly grasses look about the same. So when it comes to light issues, I just wanted to show you this area over here. So this was our Florida native wildflowers. And you can see this one end is doing really, really good. And this other end is looking very, very sad. And here's how, right? So this is how I knew it was a sun issue because I had Coreopsis, one type of plant that was spread throughout this wildflower bed. We completely lost it on this end. It's still alive and kind of putting on different flushes on this end. And it's, these are all full sun loving plants. We knew with the season change, Ponciana bloomed a lot, the bananas filled in a lot. And all of a sudden this area and all my full sun plants started to struggle because there's a lot of full sun plants here and these were part of the giveaway 
all these milkweeds, ironweeds, all are reaching that direction, which is where they're getting way more sun. So what that tell me? And the wildflowers over here spent a lot of time reaching this way. And that can be one of your indicators that's the sun issues. If you have full sun plants and they're reaching, they're reaching for something and it ain't water, it's sun. So that can be one of your ways of figuring out it needs more sun. Now, when it comes to too much sun, sunburnt plants, you're looking for tips and edges of the leaves to look kind of like they've been baked. And that's what we found originally in Kim and Shane's garden. The plants they had put there were shade loving plants, not semi-shade, not full sun, shade loving plants. And they had a burned tip look. And that's a really good indicator that they're getting too much sun. So we can safely say that this area is getting at least enough sun that these should be fine. And sun is not the main contributor to our problem here. So the second thing that I look at is if it's not a sun issue, is it a water issue? Are we not watering enough or are we getting too much water? So from talking with my neighbors and just observing again, <laughs> I know that they run their sprinklers three times a week. So barring any rainstorms, this is getting enough water. It's getting enough water that if the plant has all the right other ingredients, it should be totally fine. So that's not the issue, but maybe it's getting too much water. We're getting in the rainy season right now and there are monsoon rains. Literally I had sections of my garden underwater. So is it too much? But here's the thing, we had a pretty dry summer for the early end of it. So when it comes to these plants taking off, while they would have been slow in the first month, they could have caught up in July, which was relatively dry. Kim and Shane were running their sprinklers. They should have been getting enough water that they should have been able to take off, but they didn't. So we got to ask ourselves, why was that? Now we're getting kind of the monsoon rains that we normally would get, but they should be able to handle it. And with the rocks, we just know this is going to be fast draining, which a lot of Florida plants, especially the ones that we put in landscapes, typically like fast draining. So it's probably not the water. So when you're establishing a new garden bed, what you can sometimes find is that plants struggle the first year that you have them just because there's not enough microbiome, fungi, all the stuff that kind of works together in your soil. You just have soil and then some roots. So it does take some time for it to establish. So when you have kind of like a fresh area, I have found at times that the first year it kind of struggles, but then the next year and anything I add after that it blows up. It goes really, it goes way better and much faster. So sometimes I can just be like, well, it's the first year. It's going to kind of go a little slow. Just know that. As you can see this area, even though we got a deluge with rain, these plants are going to be okay because there's so much happening inside of our soil. It basically acts like a huge sponge and that huge sponge can absorb a lot of water and deal with it versus when you have like that high sandy content or really no microbiome going on, it really can't handle a lot and they just kind of like. And a great area to show you that's super stressed out right now. This is our frog fruit project. It looked amazing three days ago. There was frog fruit spreading everywhere and we've gotten day after day after day of deluge rain and this area became a literal swamp and the frog fruit has basically died off. The frog fruit can absorb a lot of water. It can handle, a, a, it can deal with the rains. The frog fruit over in the wildflower area is doing awesome, but because there's nothing else, this stuff just sat in water for hours and hours and a lot of it died off. And we can see in the highest areas right there, that frog fruit's doing okay because the it was still able to breathe in the soil because that's a big thing is when there's too much water, the roots aren't breathing. So we can see by observing this area, these areas, you can see my, my gutters drain right here, that all this became swamp. So do we totally switch this area out? No, we just know that as we continue through the rainy season, frog fruit's gonna have a hard time establishing in this section and we're gonna have to relay some stuff. But come next year, maybe a totally different game. And for those who are wondering what the frog fruit looks like in my yard, look at it. Completely a dense mat. We don't see any stress. We don't see any signs that it's been overwatered. And this is why we can tell, yeah, water in that section, bad. This area, it's totally fine because this is really, really well established and can handle the pressure of the monsoon summer rains. It's not the sun, it's not the water. There's kind of only two areas left. Either your plant was dying before it even got to your yard, like at the nursery, or you got a soil problem. So let's just talk really briefly about why I don't think this is actually a plant problem from the nursery. One, usually when you have a bad plant, it's one, not all the plants. And, and you may say, well, maybe it was all the mooly grasses, maybe all the mooly grasses. 
but usually we don't see it go across plants. Like we shouldn't have problems with the Bahama Cassia and problems with the Maluli grass. And I've used this nursery a bunch of times before. So, I mean, I've had a lot of success with their plants. So I don't think it's that. And to prove the point, Bahama Cassia, Maluli grasses, but I actually bought a plant at the same time from that same nursery and I put it in my yard. So here's the thing you guys may not know if you watched the original install video is that besides buying the Muli grass and the Cassia Bahama, I bought one extra plant and that was a privet senna. And the reason, well, I was trying to block this recycle bin, which you can see there's a plant doing a very good job of that. And this is the privet senna, but same time, same nursery, it's just in a different location and look at it. Now this plant, when I put it in, was about this big. And you can see in the same three months, it's huge. So we know we don't have a nursery plant problem because this one's doing fantastic. But what's different about it? It's in a different location, but it likes just as much sun as that Cassie Bahama. It will take on the water. Now I only water this area two times a week. So very similar, shouldn't be a water issue. The ground, just as saturated, right? And it's not getting as much sun as I think it wants, but it's still doing awesome. And this is when I was doing some comparison between that Bahama Cassia and this. The first month, they both just hung out really, really low. And then in the second, third month, I mean the third month, once the rains came in August, it exploded. And look how big it is now. It's doing amazing. So what is this plant telling me about what's going on over in Shana Kim's? It's not sun, it's not water, and it's not the nursery plants. Something is going on specifically in that location. So we need to go look into their soil. So originally with these plants, we had um, some sort of other landscaper come in, do some sort of fill, and then go ahead and dump a lot of rocks on here. They also put a weed cloth in. Now the weed cloth is allowing lots of little like weeds to come up and grow through them. You can see some of them over here too. So we know that there's enough air and moisture getting down in here, even in the areas that are above the cloth. But one of the things I noticed when I was digging holes is I remembered seeing a lot of sand and it's not the sand of Florida. This is builder grade sand that's used for fill. And that is what I'm starting to think might be part of our problem because I don't have any builder grade sand in my yard. It's just whatever dirt was here since whenever our houses were built and our houses were built about the same time, about 50 years ago. So that's not it. I don't use any amendments other than throwing down mulch. And with that privet senna, all I did was throw down pine straw, AKA I ran out into the street where my neighbors have a whole bunch of pines dropping pine needles. And I just picked them all up and I shoved them around there. So there wasn't anything really special going on. So if you can see this area right here, this is where one of the plants that I pulled was. And if I dig in here, I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a very tan looking color. And what I think this is, is builder grade sand fill see this and while our plants right our native plants are able to deal with sand i'm wondering if this fine grit sand and the lack of microbiome establishment is actually basically suffocating these plants because they can handle the sun they're getting they can handle the heat they're getting they can handle the water they're getting and they had enough time to establish before a monsoon rains that this shouldn't be a problem and there is one other thing because of these weeds that came up everywhere, you know, Shane and I had talked about throwing down some mulch in the area and he didn't get time to do that. So he did go grab a pesticide. He asked me if it was going to be okay to use it. And I just said, look, I mean, you got to look at what types because different herbicides, I'm sorry, not pesticide, herbicides, different herbicides kill different types of plants. And so something that goes after grasses versus broadleaf plants, I mean, you kind of have to know what you're doing when it comes to using it and you can do a localized. Now these plants, I wasn't really as worried about. I wasn't gonna come repull them, but they have fine little seeds and a two, three lay inch layer of mulch will squash them out. So don't know that if spraying the pesticide, pesticide herbicide also really stressed out these plants because it was sprayed throughout this entire area. So what do we do? So one of the things that we are definitely not gonna do at this point is replace the plants because what's stressing these out are gonna stress out whatever else I put in here. We have to start establishing a microbiome in the area. And one of the best ways of doing that is putting down some mulch. Now I have that mulch that's from the pine tree from our neighbor that away that fell into their yard and it's really good and it's breaking down really fast. So I do think if we can get a layer of it in here, 
it's gonna bring in some really good fungi. It's gonna bring in some nice like millipedes, which I know Shane and Kim don't really like the millipedes as much, but what the millipedes are great at is getting into the soil and aerating it. And I think that would really help a lot of these plants out. The other thing that I think it'll help do is it will drive some nutrition in and with the continuing monsoon rains that we're probably gonna get still throughout the month of August, it'll act like a sponge and will help regulate the amount of water going to, this, to these plants. So that will help out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go put down two to three inches of mulch all around these plants, basically up until the point of this lantana. And then we're gonna watch it over the next two, three weeks. If I start seeing some nice new growth happening, yes, that's a great sign because I would expect over the next couple months, this Bahama Cassia to double in size. This thing should be so much bigger by now. I would have expected it to be up to here. The fact that we are basically at the exact same size, not a good sign. So we're gonna allow the mulch to drive nutrition, bring in some healthy fungi, and suppress out the weeds that we don't want in the area so that this area can be much healthier. And then at that point, if this helps it take off, then we can go and replace the Bahama Castia that's missing <laughs> because we know now that we've got a healthier foundation to put plants in. So let's get going on adding some mulch. So we're about to dump some really nice mulch. So this is actually from the pine tree and an oak tree um, from one of the neighborhoods. So this has been breaking down for about a month and you can see, this is when I say like, look at this. This is not hard bark, but this stuff is already starting to break down. Within a couple weeks, we should see little mushrooms and stuff starting to grow up out of this mulch, which will tell us that it's establishing its microbiome. It's got a lot of leaf litter in it and leaves break down fast, which will be great for this area for establishing their microbiome. So there's a lot of this oak leaves in here um, to help with. So if you're thinking about trying to establish a microbiome, having mulch that's broken down for about a month is a really, really good place to start. This is why buying bagged mulch at like Home Depot and Lowe's can be challenging because oftentimes you're buying wood bark. And if you think about it, wood bark's all about protecting the outside of the tree. So it's not gonna break down very quickly or easily. And that stuff can hang around for a year or two versus when you're looking at branch mulch and leaf mulch, this stuff's gonna break down really quickly. It won't look as good for a long term because you're gonna have to replace it. But when establishing stuff for really healthy root systems, this is gonna help you do it much faster. And especially when we're at this time of year, the late summer heading into fall, you know, it'll break down pretty quickly and help us figure out this area. So one of the questions Shane and Kim were just asking me is, is that, you know, we're, and Ben was also asking me because he's helping me dump some of the mulch, is are some of these weeds actually hurting the plant? And the thing is, is these have very small root systems and are typically not going to be an issue. These are weeds that grow in almost everybody's garden beds. So no, I don't think this is primary issue. And when we were trying to troubleshoot, we were trying to find primary cause. Like, do these things not help? Sure, but are they the main reason why? Because a healthy plant can deal with some competition from some weeds like this. But these have fine little, these are not the thing. But you can see the soil, it's very clay-like, which is weird for this area. So we're just gonna pull all these little weeds out and just clear the area so that we don't feel the need to spray any more pesticides or herbicides here and we will let nature do what it needs to do. Now, if you are an expert gardener and you've got some other thoughts on some things we should be looking at, can you let us know? Because we're all learning. And that's how we're all gonna get better, planting both with native plants and exotic plants, is when we know how to help our plants have a good start and keep going. So leave that in the comments below, because I learn all the time, every day, every day. You may be asking, what are we gonna do with these? I'm just gonna bury them. Most of these have pretty fine seeds that once these are under the mulch, they should not come back. So. Okay, let me lift the leaves up because we have 
for the grass. And now we've got the mulch laid down. So the area is filled in. I'm gonna actually give a little prune to these mullies just to get a little bit easier for me for a distance to be able to tell we're heading in the right direction or not the right direction. <laughs> a little bit better right it's cleaned it up a little bit I'm just taking the long side and just trimming up some of these just so we got mostly green left and that way if I start seeing them turn yellow brown within the next couple weeks I'll know we got problems I will not be pruning anything on this. Okay, we're gonna take that one off right there. But other than that, I'm gonna leave this one completely alone. And hopefully as this all starts to break down, it'll start to look a lot better. I feel like this is looking better. It's looking green, got some nice contrast against this mulch, but also we got it a little bit pruned up, got some of the dead material out for those mooly grasses. And now this is sink or swim time. In the next month or two, it's either gonna bounce back or it's not. And if it doesn't get back to a good place before winter, it's not going to probably live through the drought season. So I hope this helped you with some beginner tips on troubleshooting your native garden or whatever type of garden you have so you can figure out why doesn't it look good. And if you want to see the original install of this project, go ahead and check out this video right here. Or if you want lots and lots of native plant ideas, check out this video right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!